Our third speaker for this session is Dr. Peter McIsaac. Peter is the Clinical Research and Informatics Fellow at the Hunter Medical Research Institute in New South Wales. Peter's a former, formerly a rural GP, and he has also worked at all levels of the healthcare system, local, state, and federal. In today's session, he's jointly presenting on behalf of Ms. Jane Gray, an executive director of the Hunter and New England Health Service, who regrets being unable to be with us today, and we do thank Peter for stepping in at relatively short notice. Peter will be providing the health service provider's perspective. How should we measure impact on service delivery? Thanks, Peter. Okay, so um, I'm here representing um, the, uh, a group of people that got a little bit of uh, a hard time at the last session and, uh, and certainly I've taken a few of the points on board. Uh, that's the, that is the people who run hospitals. So I'd like to also just do a little thought experiment here. Could uh, everybody in the room who's a patient uh, put up, has been a patient, put up their hands at some stage of their lives? Pretty much everyone. Is it everybody who's a clinician who's actually been involved in delivering patient care, put up your hands? Okay, keep your hands up if you've been also involved in running a clinical service. Okay, a few less people. And who's had roles in actually running hospitals or health services at a, at a level above a clinical unit? A few, okay. So, so to some extent, everybody has a point of view around uh, as either a clinician or as a patient or as a, as a manager about uh, what actually happens at the uh, at the coalface, and uh, and uh, the this uh, statement up here is actually out of the playbook for the um, for the alliance. It's a uh, it talks about what we're all trying to do here. But uh, the the bird feeding those hungry beaks uh, is a, a vision that came to me when uh, one of my colleagues in management was saying, "Well, we just don't really get fully understand research. To us, it looks like." a series of chicks with their mouths open saying, feed me, feed me, I'm most important, I'm most important. And so the ducks here lined up in a row. Um, now we're probably never get quite that organised, but having some form of framework or system to help management understand uh, research and for research to understand management. And uh, so uh, I'm going to try and hopefully uh, give my perspectives that I've gained through working at various uh, le levels of the system and... Uh, uh, and in my current role in uh, clinical research support. So uh, what does a um, health service look like? Well, Hunter New England may be a bit bigger than most, but uh, that red spot is uh, an area about the size of the UK, uh, stretching from uh, just north of Sydney to the Queensland border. Um, population of a million people. Uh, we have uh, 80 facilities and not just hospitals to deal with. So if you're the CEO or the senior executive of our health service, you're looking over a quite a complex uh, uh, composite of health services that, um, that uh, are really a, a small a version of our whole health system writ large. And of course, each facility itself, um, we, uh, de we have to deal with uh, the various medical and nursing allied health departments. And we've put it over the last 10 years uh, a uh, an overlay of clinical streams and uh, networks. Uh, so on the side, uh, and then perhaps a little hard to read, but uh, starting with aged care and finishing with women's health. So th there's been an effort to try and organise uh, care across our uh, diverse region and to uh, give clinicians an opportunity to work together. And, and to some extent, I suppose, these networks and streams are potentially the, uh, the level of interaction with uh, you know, some of the clinical trial groups and so on. So we could we could uh, create the, uh, the method for working together. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, much of the decision making about what happens in a hospital happens at the local level. It's not the CEO, it's not the chief operating officer, the director of nursing, it's, uh, or clinical services. It's very much what happens in the individual departments and uh, managers have to largely be advised by them. So I suppose one of the take-home messages will be uh, if you're engaging with uh, clinical research, uh, engaging with the local clinicians, because if somebody comes to uh, somebody in a management role and says, well, look, we'd really like you to set up a registry and to put lo significant resources into it, then um, let's, uh, let's uh, who are they going to ask first, but their, uh, their, their own clinical resources. So um, hospitals operate in the context of policy and uh, 
and I think we probably got a sense of that from the talk we had from, our, from around the federal health system. But uh, so here we have uh, uh, the Premier's priorities and New South Wales priorities, and uh, and they will then eventually flow down to health. I've, I've circled tackling childhood obesity because that's a theme we'll cover as we go through uh, through the discussion. But uh, so the Premier has his priorities, and then that flows through to key system priorities for health, and I've highlighted a couple here. Uh, driving uh, population health programs for against obesity, uh, embedding models of integrated care. So these are priorities at the health system level and flowing down. These are actually implemented in service agreements. Uh, would it surprise anybody to know that you can actually go online and, uh, and download the, um, the service agreement uh, Hunter New England has with the the health authority, including what how many cases we're to do and what are the... Uh, what are um, all of the things that are regarded as important for us to deliver on? We can, uh, and uh, I, I would imagine it's certainly the same for other LHDs in New South Wales. Uh, I can't speak for the rest of the country, but but if you're interested in what is driving is on people's minds, what do they have to deliver on? This is a reasonable place to start as you're framing your research. It doesn't mean your research has, would necessarily have to focus only on this, but, but if you're researching cardiovascular disease, uh, then you might look at what are some of the other issues that uh, might be relevant to uh, to that study that could uh, that could actually get the interest of a of a manager who has to deliver uh, these things then flow down and I'll quickly go through these but there's the LHD level the facility level and down at the individual level we all have uh, 90 day action plans monthly meetings with our managers this is not for ex absolutely everybody in the health service but people at a certain level of uh, of performance who uh, uh, but essentially we're all accountable for our own activities and, and linking them back to what are the, the plans of the organisation which are in turn linked to the plans for the state. So, um, so being relevant involves an understanding of this framework and it might seem o overly bureaucratic but, uh, but if you uh, look at any large organisation and, uh, uh, and probably in your own organisations uh, you'll have some degree of, of you know, this type of strategy because otherwise how do you prioritise? Uh, where are you going to put your money? Um, so, uh, so we now have we have indicators. So the number of obese children, 17 to 13, uh, enrolled in a program, uh, is an example of an indicator. So when, so when, um, and for research itself, which was one of the topics, uh, most of our research performance relate to governance and. Uh, and uh, effectiveness of uh, our research support programs, uh, calendar days to HREC approval, calendar days to authorisation. Uh, uh, we have scholarships uh, which are funded by the uh, research scholarships and, uh, uh, and research grants which are funded by the, uh, the health service as part of our research support. So we have some KPIs around those. Uh, these are all visible. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, I'll just use two, talk about briefly about two examples. One is a, was a research program called Go for Fun, uh, which focused on how to improve physical activity in schools. Now, for us at the health executive level or at Hunter New England, the researcher bringing forward this idea uh, can clearly link it to what are our priorities. We saw them right down from the, the premier down. Uh, so. Uh, when it comes to uh, deciding who are we going to award a local grant to to support that research, uh, this gives that research a, an edge over other research, which might be equally worthy, but uh, but it still uh, it uh, clearly addresses our priorities. A second area in the area of integrated care was uh, around diabetes, and uh, and uh, uh, I'm just. Somewhat saddened that uh, I was, when I was with the Commonwealth Health Department uh, and we were looking at diabetes care in general practice in 1998 and, uh, uh, and we had data from 6,000 general practices collected and that led to the diabetes program. But you know, 15 years later, we're still almost in the same position despite all the efforts that we've made. So uh, that speaks to the implementation science. We haven't really got in there. But anyway, we are, that's where we are. And uh, diabetes is still a major problem for us and the quality of management in primary care. Uh, so, uh, so our health uh, 
health district is investing our dollars in trying to work with the primary health care network to, uh, to actually improve diabetes care by, one, setting up a regional registry, uh, which we're now partnering with the National Prescribing Service to help us support, and then uh, pushing our outpatient services into the general practices so that outpatient clinics are delivered uh, not routinely, but on, in a number of occasions in practices so that GPs themselves can be involved in the care. Patients who would not otherwise have got to our patients uh, uh, can be reviewed. And uh, so both a care delivery and educational activity. And we have some data to show that it's uh, paying dividends. So, uh, so that's the sort of our experience of research um, at the LHD. But, uh, but there is evidence and... Uh, the following speaker will be actually talking about a project that's come, uh, a framework that's been developed in Hunter, New England uh, by Professor Andrew Searles uh, called FATE. But essentially it's around uh, creating a framework that uh, describes uh, the pattern from needs, aims, process, outcomes, implementation, impact, and looking systematically at each of those points. But not doing it in retrospect to justify, well, was the research money spent, but doing it up front because it can frame the research. And Brunel University came to the conclusion that having this sort of framework uh, was one of the things that uh, differentiated uh, research that had impact from research that uh, was less impactful. And the other issue was uh, targeting uh, the issue of importance to end users, and we've heard that several times in the previous session, uh, engaging with the clinicians and management about what's important to them. And so uh, doubtless the uh, previous uh, discussion around uh, the use of beta, beta blockers in, uh, and uh, anti-blood anti, uh, clotting agents uh, was, was presumably driven by the fact that that, that was an issue that was of concern to anaesthetists and, uh, and to surgeons. So, uh, so, it's, so it's about uh, uh, engaging at a level that, uh, that, uh, that does uh, hit uh, you know, buttons and issues that, are, that, that will impact on local clinicians. Uh, I won't go into the actual FATE framework and we're probably going to hear more about that later, and, uh, but there are, it's now being published. Um, so, in terms of engagement with uh, LHDs, uh, I think I would ask you, if we start off thinking about, well, what would success look like? Um, I asked that question to somebody involved in the, uh, in the Clinical Trial Alliance, and they said, well, the success might be, well, if we had some sort of systematic way that uh, the health services could help us by getting patients enrolled or giving doctors time or whatever. They were sort of process measures. Okay. Uh, but in a sense, uh, we would think from a health service point of view that starting with, well, what is important to us? I mean, that if, if we can hit things that are important to us, then it becomes less difficult for us to try and find the resources that are necessary to free up a researcher to have some protected clinical time or to put some effort into the uh, governance of our uh, local health, health rec to, to improve the, the time and, and and to make sure that we're not uh, another block by asking for approval for studies that have been done elsewhere, uh, that have already been approved elsewhere. So, uh, so uh, I think in terms of some of the ideas that came out earlier, uh, I think we have to be a bit cautious about financial incentives. Uh, they have an intended outcomes. I mean, we've all seen what really happened in hospitals over the certainly the early years of uh, you know, paying for activity uh, around uh, uh, you know, effectively gaming and uh, transferring of resources and so on. So we have to think about unintended consequences. I think the experience from the US uh, in the informatics has suggested that, uh, that giving hospitals a, uh, a positive incentive to start with uh, to implement, in that case, uh, IT, had a major effect. And then with the, uh, the penalties coming in later. So uh, I'm not sure I would actually start with penalties, but uh, try and introduce some positive payment for those or performance reward for performance for those that are doing well and then have the, the threat of the penalties coming afterwards. But uh, it, uh, that's, uh, yeah, that requires some somewhat additional resources at the start, which can be difficult. Um, health services, uh, they certainly differ. I worked not so long ago at uh, an executive level at uh, a health district in Adelaide. Uh, very, very different to what we have in Hunter, New England in terms of size. And the problem, in a sense, for a community is how do you engage with the health system, LHD by LHD, PHN by PHN, 
and we would all like to have some magic bullet that we could overlay at the top that will filter down and rapidly and make everybody fall into line, but that's not how it works in the Australian healthcare system. Um, we, we could talk about registries. Um, I personally think my view is that the uh, information systems at the grassroots levels are not as good as we've heard from speakers this morning. I think if, if uh, we all put up our hands and say, well, can we all get the data we need? Is all the data in our health system available? Uh, that we really need for doing our research? Uh, the answer would probably be no. Australia is somewhat well, uh, behind at least the, the better centres in the US and many parts of Europe in terms of our uh, information systems at the coalface, and that will Im impact on preventing us, uh, preventing us actually implement um, change and uh, monitoring the outcomes. So just to finish off, um, uh, I, th I suppose we're all sick of the American election, and, um, but uh, I would like to hark back to perhaps one of those uh, elections of the past where John F. Kennedy s said uh, to the effect that ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Uh, but he also then went on to say to the citizens of the world, ask not what America can do for you, ask what we can do together to further the cause of freedom. Well, I think the question is um, not, not asking what it is that health systems services can do to benefit research, but what can we do together to, uh, to benefit the cause of patients and healthcare? And four areas I've picked up on in the discussion. The health services are clearly responsible for translation of research into practice at the coalface level, and, uh, and we should be doing that. Uh, we should be responsible for information systems uh, that will support that, but it's going to cost 5% of the total healthcare budget of the hospital. We probably spend 1% now, so there's a, that's a major issue. We should be responsible for better governance of our, our uh, research uh, uh, health, uh, health recs and our research governance to uh, take away some of those barriers. And we should certainly be responsible for being able to monitor the numbers of patients in trials and trials going on and numbers of registries. Uh, uh, I know in our area we, uh, we looked at that uh, a few months back and uh, there was, that information is not to hand. So I think there's areas that uh, we could do uh, to provide practical assistance uh, pretty much straight away. So thank you very much and I'll look forward to discussion later.